Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about electric current. Our objectives are going to be to understand the definition of electric current, to relate the magnitude and direction of the current to the flow of charges, and finally to relate current flow, drift velocity, and the density of charge carriers in a conductor. A pretty short video, so let's dive right in. Electric current is the flow rate of electric charge. The units of this are going to be coulombs per second, also known as amperes or amps. Now, positive current flow direction is the direction of the flow of positive charges. But note, typically what we're talking about moving in a circuit are electrons, which go in the opposite direction of conventional current flow. If we wanted to define electric current mathematically, electric current, capital I, is the change in charge over time. Or if we want the instantaneous current, as we make that time interval smaller and smaller and smaller, that's going to be the derivative of charge through an area with respect to time, dq dt. In a conductor, electrons are in constant thermal motion, and they're moving quickly, on the order of a million meters per second. The net electron flow, however, is zero because it's all in random directions. However, when you apply an electric field, you get a small net flow of electrons in the direction opposite the electric field. So you get a small positive current flow in the direction of the electric field. You still have all this thermal random motion going on, but you get some small amount of average electron flow in a direction opposite the electric field. We call this average electron velocity the drift velocity, V sub d. Now let's see if we can't take a look and derive an expression for current flow. Let's consider a uniform conductor of cross-sectional area A, and, in a, and we'll apply an electric field. Let's apply the electric field this way. So there's our electric field in that direction. Now, electrons in the conductor are going to move randomly with those thermal, thermal velocities on the order of a million meters per second. But when we apply that electric field, there is some small net movement of electrons on the order of maybe half a centimeter per second opposite the direction of the electric field, and we call this the drift velocity. If we then define N as the volume density of charge carriers, the electrons contained in some volume, Vd, delta t a is then going to pass surface a in time t. What we're really talking about here is if we were to define the drift velocity vd times some time interval delta t, all of the charge carriers in this volume are going to pass surface a in that amount of time delta t. So the total volume of charge carriers that are going to pass a will be this length vd, the drift velocity, times delta t, times that area, a. If we then multiply that by the volume charge density, we'll get the number of charge carriers passing a in a unit time. If we also multiply the charge carriers by the charge on each charge carrier, we could get the total charge passing that area in that unit time. So q, the total charge passing a in that unit time, is going to be the volume charge density of carriers, times the charge on each carrier, Q, or in lots of places you'll see that written with a little e, especially for the AP curricula. Now we want this volume. That's going to be the drift velocity times delta t times the area. But we also know that current flow is going to be our Q over delta t. So if we take delta t over to this side, the left-hand side becomes current, and we get i is equal to n q v d a. Or if you prefer, i equals n e v d a, where e and q are both the charge on an electron. All right, so we've found a, 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 a derivation for current flow. Let's see if we can't take this one step further and talk about current density. Current density through a surface is just the current per area, and that's a vector quantity, J. So, thinking about it, the current density, J, is going to be the charge carrier volume density, N, times the charge on each of those carriers. So that's the, 
the charge density times the drift velocity. Or we could say then that current is going to be the integral over our surface S of our current density dotted with our area. All right, a lot of derivations there, but hopefully that gets you started with electric current. We'll take it a little bit further soon when we talk about resistors, resistance, and resistivity. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.